ultimate offering. The name alone strikes fear into the ruling knowledge of many Yu-Gi-Oh! duelists. Released in the TCG in the 2002 starter decks, the idea of the card was to perform an additional normal summon at the cost of 500 life points. Ideally, this is a simple to understand effect, and yet what we got was anything but. The original text stated, quote, at the cost of 500 life points per monster, a player is allowed an extra normal summon or set. Unquote. Okay, so can you use this effect at any time, and is my opponent allowed to use this effect too since it just says a player? There was no specifications regarding who, what, when, where, why with ultimate offering, and is a prime example of confusing early card effect text. Of course, with later printings, ultimate offering became clearer and retroactively fixed format confusion. This is not to say this is where the confusion began, as over in Japan, they had an ordeal uniquely to them. First and foremost, you'll notice the change in art given this original design depicts a hand dripping blood to what I think is a panther or some monster in the background. I guess the blood was too much and the OCG name, Price of Blood, reflects this. I don't know if I prefer it over Carnage popping out of Shrek's ear, but hey, to each their own. Which art do you prefer? Going back on track, the original effect translates to, quote, By paying 500 life points for each monster, you can summon monsters separately from normal summons, unquote. Aside from the confusions I mentioned with the TCG debut earlier, this phrasing opened up a whole new can of Wicked Worm Beasts. If you couldn't tell, there are no specifics on what kind of summon. Is it normal, or could it be special summoning? It does say separately from normal summons. The debut set was Booster 3 and by, say, Volume 5, using this card would greatly change your ratios to feature more powerful monsters like Blue Eyes and Summon Skull, and thus the creation of the Price of Blood deck. It was around this time Duelist would adopt the strategy thanks to Change of Heart, giving more incentive to include Skull in the build, and giving the deck a much needed edge. Despite that, for better or worse, this was when Exodia was tier 0. And keep in mind, official rules were still around which didn't include tribute summoning, making UO all the more alluring, leaning into its special summoning factor. As another cool thing from this, it would make summoning Gate Guardian much easier for a spicy deck since Gate Guardian came out as an attendance card just a month prior to Volume 5. Ultimate Offering was the first continuous trap card in the entire game, being a fusion material for Yasushi the Skull Knight, and even potentially being responsible for the addition of the Battle Step replay. Yet, with all that fun trivia, the trap will forever be known for its confusing text in both the TCG and the OCG. It has since gained respect in older formats, as well as gaining power in the evolution of the game, where it may never see itself off the ban list without receiving an errata, but that's a topic for a different day. Anyways, that's all I got.